Hey guys, what's up? It is October 12th, 6 15 p.m. And today we are going to continue where we left off. I'm going to be continuing to code my app. Today I want to try and finish the modal sheet. I don't know how far I'm going to get into it because those things seem to be pretty complicated. I also don't want to increase tech debt, which pretty much means that I don't want to continue creating code that isn't modular. I want to create code that is usable for the future since I don't know where this app is going to be in a year or two. So I'll let you know how it goes, but let's get started. Today, we are going to work on the stuff that I mentioned before. So hopefully it'll all go well. We're gonna try to fill this modal sheet in but I think before I do that, I'm going to start with the modularity part. So some of this is similar to a different modal sheet that I have. So that's comparing the modal sheet that's pressed here and the modal sheet that's pressed here. And obviously there's a lot of the same elements. There's the same color, the same size, the same roundedness of the corners. So I think I want to try to duplicate that as much as possible and yeah we'll see how it goes so this session was super interesting because i didn't do anything flashy it was something that would help the future of my code base and i was excited to do it when I got it to actually work, I was happy that I didn't have to copy all of that code over and over and over again. And I felt like that saves me a lot of time. And I feel like in software engineering, that's what defines a better software engineer when you're able to optimize your time better for yourself and also for the team that you're working with. I currently have one other coworker who is helping me with this mobile app. And so it's important that we make our lives easier for each other and we implement practices that help us in the long run. I mean, you could see that through the time lapse, I add lots of comments and I try to make sure that no matter what I'm doing, whoever is looking at my code, that they're able to understand what exactly they're looking at and how it connects to the rest of the code base. And I feel like I still have a ways to go. Like I'm definitely not perfect. And my code base is a little bit of a mess because it's very startup-y right now. But I think overall the structure is better than I expected it to be. And it has saved me a lot of time by having it somewhat organized versus just creating all the files I wanted and putting methods anywhere and it's just been super super nice for me. Lots of times particularly with this time lapse and this session I referred a lot to Stack Overflow and a lot to chat AI or generative chat AI and I feel like it's a joke that that's what makes a good software engineer but I think in general Learning to choose your battles and realize when you have to look towards the internet or look towards other sources to learn something is something that's really, really good to have as a software engineer. Just because you're not ever going to learn everything. There's way too much information for any type of tech stack. And so it's important that you seek out experts or people that have done similar things to what you're doing and that way you cut down on your time of learning and also implementing. So I feel like I've refined this over the past two, three years that I've been working at Google, but I think I have always adopted this self-learning mindset and I thought it was worth noting and talking about because if you're trying to be a software engineer and you're trying to break into the market and whatnot, I think it's an important skill to know. 
I think everything that I've been talking about are super important. Being good at collaboration, documenting all of your changes, transparency, and a motivation to learn. One thing that I think I could do better, which I am still trying to figure out, is have a test first mindset. I forgot exactly what it's called, but it's essentially the idea that while you're coding, you create tests. And because I don't know the Flutter framework as much, it makes me feel less instinctive to write a test once I create a widget. And lots of times I'll write the test after I finish the entire thing and I'll say, all right, well now it's time to write a test. And it's great and all, it does cut down on a lot of production time, obviously, but I think working with a test mindset helps a lot to double check that you're doing the right thing, that you have the correct practices, and that you're reaching the minimum level of aptitude that you need to make sure that your code is working properly all the time. And the only thing that delaying tests does is it just delays the amount of time that it'll take for you to find the issue that you're eventually going to have or your user is going to have. Also in this session, while I was trying to figure out how to replace a lot of the manual inputs or manual parameters, there is a particularly interesting part of the modularity where I would pass in widgets, which are the UI components, but the UI components wouldn't update because the logic that checked a Boolean to decide which widget should show up was in a part of the code that was in an asynchronous function, which means that it, it gets called once, it doesn't get updated, it doesn't get refreshed unless you straight up restart the app or terminate it and reopen it. And so I thought to myself, how am I going to get this Boolean logic into my new reusable modular modal sheet if the thing that opens the modal sheet is another asynchronous method? So essentially, the only way to refresh a state for a widget is to have it within a stateful widget and to use the set state function. And you're not able to do that in an asynchronous method because asynchronous methods aren't widgets. In general, asynchronous methods are usually used for handling callbacks or doing any type of logic where you don't necessarily need to rely on other components. And updating widget UI does rely on other components or other pieces of logic. And so I had the idea, which is great, which was instead of passing a widget into my modular method, I passed a function callback. And now that I'm saying it out loud, it does sound pretty reasonable, but I think I was just trying to figure out how exactly I was going to do it. It didn't exactly click at the time. And so hopefully, me explaining it helps you with a similar situation that you have. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the time lapse and I'll see you guys in a little bit.
So I think I'm pretty much done. I spent about an hour modularizing all of my code. And so code looks a lot cleaner now. It used to be a giant brick of code. And now this is pretty much what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty clean. I can individually customize the toolbar or the specific content or the sticky header that shows up here. And I pretty much replicated everything that I had, but now all of the code has some architecture to it. So it's a lot easier to implement future modal sheets and it's a lot easier to customize them without having to reuse copy and paste code. So I'm pretty happy with this progress. Only took an hour. Ran into a bit of issues trying to figure out optional parameters. And that could be seen. Where is it? Over here. I was trying to figure out how exactly to input parameters in a way where they were named, but weren't required when using the method. And it turns out that all you have to do is put little braces here and it'll allow you to put any number of arguments in unless you specify it as required. So that's pretty cool. I also realized that you could also set default values within a named parameter. I know these things seem like pretty simple things to remember when creating a function, but sometimes I think I just forget. And then when I try to research it in Google, I don't exactly know the proper phrasing. So this is all really, really great. Code looks a lot better. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The entire session was about, I'd say three hours. So I'm pretty happy about that and about the progress that I made for three hours. Usually it takes me about five hours to debug and I feel like I made a lot of good progress. But if you like the content, feel free to subscribe and I hope that I see you in the next video. Peace.